We're here, all of us, as friends and most of us as believers in something. Friends and believing friends together face the common mystery of life and death, and not so differently. For each of us experiences an aloneness at this moment, keener for those who knew and loved these seven in a special way, but aloneness for us all. The fact is that of all the deeds of men and women, the deed of death seems mine alone to do. The whole burden of the deed, the whole responsibility seems mine alone, each person's alone. And it is a deed I do to die. It is an act and an accomplishment to take the moments and the currents of my life and in my freedom to dispose of them, believers say to offer them, with absolute finality. It is my most important act the ultimate exercise of my freedom in a lone bed or in a cataclysm of nature or in a man-made disaster, each death is singular. So we share a certain helplessness whenever one we love or admire does in whatever way this deed. We experience a sense of the frailty of life. We feel, as seldom otherwise, how fragile are all things including the existence that we know and rightly prize. We are stripped of our pretensions and customary attitudes, and in this nakedness we find comfort in our rituals, and they are varied. For some of us, they are centered in church, synagogue, temple, ashram, or coven. They may take place in front of marble altars or out under the trees and sky. Whatever our background and traditions, almost all of us, share a most ancient ritual, song. Passed on from time immemorial by scald and bard, the custom of commemorating those things which are truly significant to us with music has become one of our most basic rituals. This singular act, this deed, committed by each of them, Dick Scobie, Judith Resnick, Krista McAuliffe, Ronald McNair, Michael Smith, Ellison Onizuka, and Gregory Jarvis came about because each was a believer. And we share or we respect the vision with which each could offer life and death. In our nakedness and our fragility, we join in this ancient ritual of music because it deeply seems to us that history moves, and purposefully, because the God of history has spoken in events and prophets' voices, because there was this person, Jesus, Moses, Zarathustra, Buddha, who breathed out a spirit that all our habitual piety and tired cliches have not been able to extinguish because this ritual celebration of God's covenant word and music, love and sacrifice and reconciliation carries its message, more meaningful than any creed, across the barriers of our aloneness into the futile void of our helplessness. It is a deed that satisfies, a pledge that challenges, a taste of that elusive cup of peace, community, harmony, love, man slowly seeks. True, this sign, this ritual of songs of sadness, joy, remembrance, and hope, this deed we do in song is part of the tent that we live on in earth and will one day be folded up. Yet, of all the furnishings of our tent, it survives most handily the test of a friend, a hero's death. And the isolation that their lifeless bodies cries out to us tent dwellers does not exclude a sense of deep, unthreatened unity. Because the faith this ritual revives says yes to knowing that there is a spirit greater than any of us that will allow, no, that will require us to grow, to expand our frontiers, to accomplish our full potential, to grow. All of us as individuals must grow, and the entity that is composed of all sentient beings must grow. 
In mere organic entities, the roots that give nourishment from the earth, the stems and branches that support, the leaves that process sunlight for more food, and even the flowers that eventually give way to new seeds are unaware that they are component parts of a total unity. Let it not be so with us. Let us all be aware of our interdependence, the global entity of which we are part, must be allowed to grow to become truly universal. Each of the seven whom we commemorate here today is like a seed and the hard pod that, in their cases as in ours, resisted the ascent toward unity and harmony with all creatures and their source, that pod is broken and it opens up. The spirit that drives us on toward sharing self and substance with our fellow men now has free reign over them.